All right, our second to last uh, qualifying match here. We have Colby M68 versus Sorry. Let's see uh, who's going to be able to advance. Both of these players, excuse me, are actually uh, pretty new to the scene, have not seen either name uh, around often. So, again, good to see even more new names in this tournament. Lots of people coming out for the from the woodwork for this Duels of Runeterra here. Uh, so, pretty awesome to see. But let's go ahead and get into the second to last qualifier here for the fifth Spot to the Invitational, Sorry versus Kobe M68. So, uh, Sorry has actually brought sort of the most standard lineup you could imagine. When people asked me what I thought they were going to see this weekend, I figured War Mothers, Swain TF, and Lux Asel is probably your standard lineup. That is what Sorry has come in with. Let me make sure this is actually Warm Others. Okay, yeah, it is Warm Others. Ah, okay. And then on the side of Colby, we've got Pirate Agnes. Relatively normal. Let's keep it tame here. Then we move into Indoor Spiders. This one has Sejuani, so a little different from what we normally see. And then this one, Zed Leeson. Nice. Okay. Lee? Wow. Okay. So I'm just happy to see another Leeson, but I'm a little hesitant with Zed Leeson and how I feel. How do you feel, Boulevard? <laughs> I don't think I like it as much as the Taric. The Taric, while it's not generally something that I want to pillar on, it's not something I feel necessarily bad about pillaring on, but I do like the Zed, so bear with me here. While you don't get the extra draw power like you would out of a Taric playing Pale Cascades and guiding touches onto your unit and then supporting that on over and accelerating the Leeson level, Zenith Blade onto a Zed. You've got a quick attack overwhelm unit. The overwhelm actually makes it so that a Nexus Strike will still count, and it makes it nearly impossible to stop the Zed level up. Yep. And then the leveled Zed will copy the overwhelm. It's not yeah. often that we actually see that copy of the, uh, what's it called? Zenith Blade. The, no, another copy of the keyword, rather. Um, onto oh, the Zed Shadow right, yeah. become relevant. But with a Zenith Blade, that's going to be the difference maker. Yeah. And already seeing this deck queued up in the first game here by uh colby we'll see how good it is and if it's able to pick up a win versus good old tf swain so also so go pretty well also in chat mentioned uh they had mentioned in chat uh what's it called the written in the stars being a phenomenal target for zed especially yeah. and leeson as well just getting that extra damage onto it i don't think there's actually any celestial generation in this deck uh, yeah, no celestial no. generation whatsoever, so not actually going to be an option. Yeah, we do see these Zed coming down here on turn four, though. Uh, instead of the Lee Sin, oddly enough, uh, not coming down on curve. It's like we see the Zed uh, with the attack token, which does seem to make a little bit of sense, and that is going to shut that one down. Uh, even if there, yeah, fast. even if there is a pale cascade, uh, this is going to feel really bad just losing your Zed that quick. We should. So the other thing, there is a retreat in this deck. Uh, so we could see something like a retreat come down. It looks like we might. It looks... What happens? Oh, just deny oh, onto the wow. gold card. Okay. But that means make it rain. And I like that out of sorry. Actually playing around the potential for a Pale Cascade or some way to save the Zed going for the gold card rather than the red yeah. card to get that extra one damage. Yeah, and, you know, that kind of stinks for Colby. I, I understand why the deny was used there because you were kind of hoping that you would start to be able to push these Zed attacks through. But having the make it rain also come out, you just kind of really get punished for it because you want that deny later on in the game to also protect something like a Lee Sin. Uh, we do see two deny in deck and only one Bastion, so that's one less way to protect these uh, these champs here. Wow. What is this, pirate aggro? <laughs> You're down to six life on turn five, Colby. you got to turn this around fast. That is, that yeah. is a, a very aggressive start on the side of Sari, who isn't even necessarily gassed out. I mean, just has these two copies of Salvage, and it's just going to straight away go for the Noxian Guillotine onto this Lee Sin. Colby Why just not? cannot yeah. find his footing in this matchup. Okay, listen, Sari. What did Colby ever do to you? Like, chill out, man. <laughs> Colby, Sari has been, like, sitting here meditating for the last four hours while we cast it through top eight. <laughs> or I guess the finals? I don't know what to call it. The winner's bracket side. Um, and just contemplating how this matchup is going to play out. And that is <laughs> five kill with a twisted wow. face deck. That is faster than we have seen any aggro deck end a game so far this tournament. Okay. Wow. That was quick. Uh, so sorry. You're going to go ahead and go up 1-0 there. Holy bejesus. What a quick game. And I think that's probably the quickest. That might be a world record for quickest TF Swain win. 
Does Colby not, uh, does Sari not understand how far away we are from being able to cast the other side of the bracket? Yeah, I don't... I mean, Humble Opinion still has to play Kuk, I, uh, Kukin, and then we'll actually go and meet Rokio. Ranu has been eliminated. Yeah, Humble Opinion is playing Kukin as we speak, and Utono Dorado getting beat by Kukin previously, so unfortunately not being able to make it all the way. I was kind of kind of rooting for Utono a little bit, uh, I'm not going to lie. So we'll see who is going to be playing Rogio. Uh, if it's going to be Kukin or Humble Opinion for that final spot here for the Invitational. Well, the fifth spot. We do still have to play another one after this. It's not quite the end of the day. There's one more finals after this one. Okay, this one shouldn't end turn five, right? Uh, this one should last a little bit longer. Well, let's see. It's <laughs> it's what I hope it lasts a little bit longer. Otherwise, I get a question. How the heck we got to a turn five where somebody lost in this matchup? So Endure Spiders uh, on the side of Colby, or sorry, on the side of, uh, yeah, Colby versus this Commander Lidros ramp deck with the War Mothers Call in it. So we'll see if it's able to do just that and ramp up to a quick War Mothers Call because we do already see one in hand and also two Wording Stones. So it's definitely, especially going up against something like Endure, uh, I, those Wording Stones are probably going to stick around for a while. And aside from the one of Commander Lagros, which I do want to say, I do like a lot in the War Mothers deck. Just kind of, I mean, I know that you don't get the ability off of the War Mothers, but just having that available after it dies is sort of this late pressure onto some of the more controlly decks of the format, especially since you're not playing Rekindlers anymore. You don't really care about getting multiple Trindomers out because they're not as sticky as you really want them to be. They only live once. It's not quite like a Nivea. Um, there is one Soul Gorger in this deck, which is something that we used to see as a three of out of sort of the old War Mother decks. It was generally. Before Trundle came out, the champion lineup was usually something like Anivia Trindomir, sometimes Anivia Thresh, and then you would play Soul Gorgers and Hearth Guards and Rekindlers, and that was kind of your unit lineup back when Wording Stone was still a 0-3 and nobody really played it. And it looks like we actually went for the Hearth Guard over the Wording Stone, which I don't mind. Uh, people, when they play Ramp, kind of forget about, you have to check which turns you're skipping. You want to skip turn 4. Turn 5, you actually have a play. Turn 6 and 7 don't really matter, so on turn 6, you want to commit to skipping turn 7, get up into that Trindomir turn, and then, lo and behold, next turn we have War Mothers. This is a perfect curve out of Sari. Yeah, and you're going to see the Cursed Keeper hit the field here. Looks like Averroji and Hearthguard are going to go in for the attack as well. Uh, we'll see if uh, Colby's going to line up a block here. Uh, I, I, I still, though, with both Wording Stones on the field, really going to give the advantage to Sari here. I think uh, we're going to get a super early War Mothers call, and that might be early enough so that Kobe M can't really get any of the They Who Endures online because although They Who Endures will be big, Sari's going to have a lot of big units to kind of challenge those They Who Endures uh, and obviously has atrocities of his own as well. So we might actually see more damage pushed through from the side of Sari faster than Kobe is able to get to that They Who Endure point. So Trindomir going to come down next turn, though it's not Sari's attack turn. You know, the Atrocity is already basically sort of setting up and threatening this lethal. And I, oh, second Atrocity, I feel like so often we see these players actually pick up both Atrocities very, very early. Yeah, I've seen a lot of early Atrocities, honestly, throughout this whole tournament. Um, obviously, we saw, who was it that had two Atrocity and three Troll Chant? Uh, <laughs> oh, I want to say it was Vig, actually. Uh, it might have been Vig. That felt super bad. So that's not cool at all. Uh, we'll see if that's something so, that gets mimicked here with another Atrocity drone. Now are we going to go for the Trindomir to try and push a little bit of damage and set up for the double Atrocity that we have? Or do we go for Hearthguard to get more value off of the War Mothers we plan on playing next turn? Looks like the answer was a Snap Trindomir on the side of Sorry, Playing very decisively so far. This is the first time we're actually getting a chance to watch this player, but... Uh, you know, I mean, fastest game time by a long shot so far. Yeah, I'd say so. That was uh, that's insane. I still can't believe that that ended so quickly in that first game. But uh, again, he knew what he had to follow up and just said, you know what? Let's just actually skip game. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't follow up the top deck caution. Let's just game one's going to be real quick. Sorry, Maddie had to wait so long uh, <laughs> for this match. So, uh, but yeah, we are going to see the poor Oebo come out did, here. Did we just see Stalking Shadows miss? for colby yeah oh wait wow yeah that's what the poor we most were that's insane second time today apparently so wow <laughs> that's uh i've had that happen to me once it's actually very few and far between <laughs> that even happens i 
I like that Sari started to capitalize Sari because it's his yeah. name. <laughs> I, I love the idea that instead of apologizing, Sari just tells him, it just reiterates, I'm sorry. No, Sari actually can't ever say sorry. He has to say, I apologize. <laughs> that's the only way. I want him to be like, oh, I miss Talking Shadows. Yeah, that's who I am. I'm the guy that makes you miss Talking Shadows. And now we have Ladros actually available instead of the War Mother's Call, if that's a play we want to go for. This is the turn where Endor would be coming down, but I don't think it's a very big one at all. Yeah, wow. This Ladros is 10 sweet, sweet damage with Atrocity in hand. Sorry, has lethal set up. And is there any way, there's no way for Colby to, to heal up or anything, right? There, there is unspeakable nope, horror. I mean, there's unspeakable horror. But yeah, but next turn, Sorry has two atrocities and 12 mana. He could just throw 18 damage at your nexus between the Trindamir and the Commander Ladros. Wow, this is <laughs> going to be the quickest two games. Sorry, where have you been? No wonder we couldn't find Sorry. He hasn't been streaming because it only takes five minutes for him to win a match. <laughs> Why bother streaming when uh, there's nothing to watch? <laughs> it's just... Oh, my God. Looked at chat for a second, looked back, and I thought the Trindamir was the Nexus explosion animation, but it is just... <laughs> I feel, I mean, Colby has not had the best luck so far. Mm -hmm. Whiffing on the Stalking Shadows just feels like insult to injury based on how quick game number one was. And uh, and now even misses the Allegiance on oh the Wraith Caller. Oh my god. How unlucky. I mean, I thought Ghoster yeah. Driver had it rough, oh. but Colby is in rough sorts Are we here. watching Ghoster Driver? Are we sure this isn't Ghoster Driver we're watching? This seems like Ghoster Driver. <laughs> like allegiance stalking shadows that is gonna be game for sure next turn we are gonna see there is the mana available for two atrocities and that's yeah see there's there's the ggs i oh mean th God. there's a possibility that we can actually get into <laughs> kukin versus humble opinion which will not actually be the finals but like this game has just gone so quickly oh my god this is insane what has it been 10 minutes since the match started and now i mean there's nothing there's absolutely nothing that colby can do here he is just dead to this and the doom beast comes down but that's not enough life gain there's 8 19 damage represented next turn are you kidding me sorry well on the bright side humble opinion is still streaming <laughs> good we're gonna need it he's gonna be so confused when we pop back in so here we go oh no the trickster just end the stream i think i think uh did we, yeah, did that just happen? I guess it's probably game over, to be honest with you. Probably. I mean, I would assume that... I mean, it kind of sucks that we don't know for sure we didn't get a cast at the end of the game, but like, if he was streaming on some kind of delay and then just ended the stream and cut it off, it Ooh. does mean that we're going to miss the last couple of minutes. Yep, that's the thing that happens. So, uh, unfortunate. But yeah, it looks like Sorry took a really quick 2-0 there versus uh, Colby M. You hate to see it. You hate to see that kind of bad luck. That's insane. Uh, so we do have humble opinion is still streaming. So I'm gonna go ahead, hop back on. I don't want to. I don't want to overlook this. Like, sorry, moves on to the invitational. That, yeah. that was a finals match. I know we didn't get to. All right, sorry, moving on with a spot to the invitational. So congratulations, and we're gonna have one more game. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on the bell, so you guys can get notified when that game goes up for that last sweet, sweet spot to the invitational. But as always, everybody stay healthy, stay positive. I hope it just works for you. And peace out.